my studio guys. I thought I would hit your screens with a little studio tour. I should have put my face on, I should have probably presented myself for this video, but this video isn't about me, it's about my studio, it's about where the magic happens, where I run both of my fashion focused businesses from. You may or may not know that this has been a custom built studio, so she's a little rough around the edges, but I love her. Um, you're gonna hear farmyard animals through the video, you're gonna hear barking, you're gonna hear bleating, you might even hear a cow. I am adjacent to a cow shed. My partner was incredibly generous and built me my dream studio, um, but it's within a shed. I thought I would give you a little studio tour on where I spend my days. So come with me guys and see the magic. <laughs> because this is where the name for my sewing pattern company came from, the Digital Pattern Library. Now these are blocks, they go from women's wear through to men's wear, through to uh, a surplus of Empire trousers that my grading company accidentally sent me. I obviously asked for digital files and they ended up sending me um, hard copy blocks. So. I don't know if to do a giveaway. I'm a little bit stuck on what to do. I obviously want to deal with these in a sustainable manner. Let me know in the comments if you'd be keen for a giveaway. I've got obviously UK sizes six to 26 that need to go to a good home. Um, anyway, so this is my pride and joy alongside my table. I know I've said I had two pride of joys. I just love my studio in general. So allow me that. But um, we have basic, basic, women's wear top blocks here, um, anything through to a basic coat, basic trousers, and then obviously what I do with these blocks is I manipulate the pattern to create something a little bit more designed and detailed and interesting. But yeah, this is where it all started. Oh hey, Pride and Joy number 1,722 is my industrial sewing machine. This is a Brother SL11103. Give me a second. I got that right. And she's a lock stitch machine, which means she only does straight lines. She doesn't do the domestic fancy zigzaggy stitches, but I have my mum's ancient artifact to do that for me. Um, she has a power saving motor and I just love her. I got her in my final year at uni, so she's a few years old, um, but she serves me so well. She still goes like a trooper. I really should get her serviced but um, she does everything I want her to and more. Well, not more, she just does straight stitches, but she really does make garments look that little bit more professional. Um, and she can take layers of fabric, any fabric you throw at her. She's got the power to crunch through those layers of material. Um, and I just, 
I just really, really love her. If you could fall in love with an inanimate object, this would be the one for me. Just as I hit record, the dogs start barking. Fabulous. This little corner is also one of my favorites. Rude. Maybe it's only when I talk. Anyway. This little corner is also one of my favorites. I always wanted a really, really big mirror. A lot of the time I actually fit things on myself. I used to um, be unofficially used as a fit model when I worked in the industry uh, because I'm lanky, because I have no boobs. So they always used to pick me out and use me as a fit model. I use myself as a fit model for a lot of the designs I do and I just really wanted a big mirror in order to see what I was doing, check out the outfits and have one of those generic styling photo moments. Um, Mary the Mannequin, my OG gal, stays in this corner most of the time and then I've got one of these cute dinky little mini Ikea ironing boards um, which are actually super useful but I have cut out my own um, wadding, batting type thing and put it under the board cover because I just found that it was so thin, the original one it came with, so I just wanted to pad that out a little bit more. So behind me guys is my mood board, my inspiration board, my metal grid that I just pin everything onto. You will be able to see behind my head something that I call a vision board. I've got a uh, house inspiration, car inspiration, horse inspiration, all the things I want out of life. Um, but I also put up project inspiration obviously and it just is the visual cue in my studio. It's a very white studio, it's a very plain studio, I get that. When I work with so many client projects, um, number one, I have to be very careful with confidentiality, so I can't always um, show all the colourful, fun things that go on behind the scenes. And number two, um, I don't actually know what number two is. Oh hey, Alex from five minutes in the future from when I last recorded that clip. I decided I did know what reason number two was. Reason number two is keeping it white keeps it neutral. When I work on a vast variety of client projects and design projects, um, should I commit to a colour or anything like that, it can often bring crosswires into my creative process and I quite like being able to have a clean slate for every new project. It keeps me focused on the creative direction. So that is my reason number two and I just had a brain fart. Anyway, back to the video. But the vision board behind me allows me to mix and match and just keep all the imagery that keeps me inspired uh, in one place and I usually sit this side of the table so it's just to the left of me as I'm working and if I sit the other side of the table it's just in front of me while I'm working so it's a really nice big focal point in my studio um, I can also hang things up on there for outfit um, inspiration and outfit organizing and I just find it a really really useful bit of kit um, an intern actually brought it into my studio when I used to work um, in a church that's a story for another time. Um, her dad worked on set design and she brought this in one day and I've had it ever since. So there's a little bit of sentimentality assigned to it as well. But um, I really, really love this part of my studio. So this rail here is my to-do rail. Uh, it's a mismatch, mix match, I've never really been good with sayings, of odd jobs and toiles and garments and just things that I need to look at on a daily basis to remind me to get done. Um, the first thing on this rail is a black garment bag full of other garment bags. It's also covered in cobwebs and I really, really need to get over my spider phobia pretty quickly in this studio because they spring out of everywhere. Um, I also have garments that friends and family inevitably ask me to alter for them. I've got old client work toiles. Um, this was actually done over a year ago, but I was just really kind of proud of the coat pattern that I did for a client. So I guess I'm a hoarder and that is hanging up to remind me of good times. We've got 
The Ruffle Tea, you might recognise this little number, it's available on Digital Pattern Library. Um, the neckline on this, if that focuses on my terribly fake tanned hands, um, was sewn wrong and so this is the whole kind of sampling phase. But, um, but yeah, still looks pretty good when it's on, which is what matters. And then we also have the accompanying asymmetric culottes. Everybody thinks that that outfit is a dress. I'm going to insert it here. Uh, but it's not. It's two pieces. It's the asymmetric culottes and the ruffle tee just rendered in a really beautiful um, red, deep red. And then this has also got the scrap buster applique on it. Um, and there is a tutorial on how to do that on my Instagram feed. So we have those two garments hanging up there. We have a lot of empty hangers, which isn't ideal. I will try and fill those shortly. But um, another thing I've got hanging up is a coat, which I plan on tailoring to my body. I think this is a size 10, which is just a little bit too big for me. Um, and the collar on that, the false leather has rubbed away. So I plan on replacing that. We've got a shirt which will be turned into a crease backpack video coming soon. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. Um, so it's gonna be a really cool upcycled project. We have the Empire trousers, also available on Digital Pattern Library, shameless plug, um, which have a bust zip that I need to repair. So um, I love the Empire trousers and I love this fabric and I'm not prepared for it to not be worn just because the zip is bust. We have a few twirls of an upcoming pattern. Mm, shush, shush. And then another thing I've started to do, I really wanted my fabric stash to be stored on one shelf. Number one, um, I don't personally want to hoard too much fabric. I don't necessarily think it's the most sustainable approach I could take. And number two, it also gives me an excuse that when it's on one shelf, I'm allowed to buy more fabric. So a bit of a contradiction there in sustainability, but we'll move, we'll move on, we'll move on. So what I do instead is I now hang up fabrics that I have plans for, and I'm gonna definitely be using these in my next sewing projects. And as I move through them, I will then bring fabrics from here onto here. Um, so it's kind of like a queue lining up for the sewing projects that I'm going to do. If you can hear the dogs, they are so annoying. If it's not dogs, it's sheep in this studio and they bark all day and they bleat all day. But I'm an animal lover, so I just got to sit down and make do with it. So sorry if you can hear them. I might even just edit them out in post editing. The magic of YouTube. I'm going to be discovering this, aren't I? Anyway, this is my to-do rail. Um, it's probably the least organised thing in my studio, but it makes sense to me, which isn't that all that matters. Um, so, moving on. Yes, guys, that's it. That is the end of the studio tour. Um, another reason, coming back to the white walls, that I keep this big space here nice and white is for product shots is for instagram shots i usually do quite um clean background images that have a really clear focus point so you'll see me like oh my zoolander i just hit my elbow on the wall i'm really not that um smooth but uh but yeah it's not the biggest space but it's the perfect size space for my needs um i really really hope you enjoyed it i hope i've covered all the bases um and let me know in the comments what kind of videos you'd like to see from me i am going to be doing a crease backpack sew along hopefully in time for fashion revolution week um teaching you how to upcycle a large shirt into a really cute little lightweight festival backpack um, and I've got some other things in the pipeline to hopefully give you a few tutorials and a few bits of fun content to keep you stimulated, entertained and uh, creative in these uncertain times. Won't say the word, I won't say the word, I'll just leave it there. But thank you so so much and I will see you again soon. You can always catch me over on Instagram. Um, and you can sign up to Digital Pattern Library 
for loads of good freebies um, and access to the resource library, which has a ton of templates, scrap busting patterns that are completely free, um, wardrobe inventory checklists. There's just some really, really good juicy stuff over there. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you'd love to see. Thank you for stopping by and stay safe, keep creative. <laughs>